Welcome to Happily Ever Aftermath, the podcast that explores the movies that influenced how we view love and romantic relationships. Yes, there will be spoilers. I'm your host, Diana Rodrix Connor. Is this about the other night, the kiss? That, uh, you thought I was coming on to you, didn't you? No, that was more of a sister-in-law, brother-in-law kind of kiss. We're talking about Mrs. Winterborn from 1996. Uh, Happy Frasuary, Ryan. Thank you. Happy Frasuary, Diana. Thanks. Uh, We're talking about Mrs. Winterborn, and I should probably point out a little behind-the-scenes talk is that when we were doing The Mummy and The Mummy Returns Mm -hmm. last time, I remember dancing back and forth between, you know, Polina uh, asking me about it. I'm just like, we can always do Mrs. Winterborn if you can't come up with anything, and... And then I'm like, I really want to do the Mummy Returns instead because it just it did. I was not feeling Mrs. Winterborn at that moment. Yeah, and meanwhile, I was like, stop making up movies. I <laughs> <laughs> How dare never you? Never heard of this. Uh, well, yes, I know you've never heard of this, but um, one of the things that's kind of important about it is that it came out the year after while you were sleeping, mm-hmm. and can cons- well kind of a lot in common plot wise. Well, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to read anything official because all of the descriptions kind of irritated me. But the the basic premise of this is mistaken identity. A woman is pregnant. She is taken in by. They assume that she is the wife of. Um, the, uh, so surely, yeah, so the, the 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 son and his wife have both died in a train wreck, and none of the family have met uh, the son's new wife. Yes, and she is farcically thrust into uh, her identity. Sure, exactly, and and her whole thing is just, uh, I just want to do what's right for my baby. And I'm sure if it was just like a like a not super wealthy family that brought her in and assumed that she would have taken that too. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, a roof, because earlier in the movie she literally has a newspaper over her head to keep her from the rain and yes this, this is a homeless woman at uh yes it bears mentioning a, a homeless teenager actually did they say her age she was 18 when she oh, left the house right right yeah she met the 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 scuzzball guy on her 18th birthday and uh mm-hmm, mm-hmm. couldn't have been with him for more than a few months before before she got pregnant right so, right yeah. exactly so so that we'll we'll, t- we'll talk more about age later um but but if if i could so actually why don't you get started you had never heard of this movie before. I never had. <laughs> and, I saw it for the first time uh, last night. And I feel the whole time, how much angst did I have about, quote, subjecting you to this movie? You were really worried I was going to hate this movie. I know, right? And 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 can you blame me? Because after you were done, we went to the Rotten Tomato score. Mm-hmm. This has 10%. Yeah, and, and I agreed, like, oh, 10% is, is too low. This mirror, it's like a 20, 25, maybe. <laughs> like, it's not well, a... <laughs> yes, but also, like, okay, you didn't watch music from another room with us, did you? Uh, I did not. Well, it was in the whole people who watched this also watched, and that had a 33% for Rotten Tomatoes. I see. Yeah. Um, again, another kind of baby weirdness, misidentity type of th- movie. But um, but but here's here's the thing. I loved While You Were Sleeping... Why wouldn't I want to watch a movie that is supposed to be a similar premise, except this time there's a baby involved and there's a horrific death? And Brendan Fraser. Uh, right, right, right. And does that just make it better? Is that the calculus here? Or? I don't know. I do like Bill Pullman. <laughs> Bill Pullman, yeah. I yes. Mean. And uh, I mentioned Spaceballs before, and I think the... Well, oh, okay, come on. Bill Pullman, you've got your... You've got your Spaceballs, you got your wire while you were sleeping, and you've got your... um. Independence Day? Mm-hmm. Okay. This is a tough one now, but you're right. Brendan Fraser does win. <laughs> not because it's Fraseyary, but because it's not Paul Tember. No, I, uh, that, that's no good. But uh, it, Something it, go quiet into that good coma. I don't know. It wasn't a good coma. I know. Is there any... Well, okay. Okay. So, yes, I was very, very anxious about having you watch that because I knew so much of this movie is just not good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was uh, none of the none of the movie really struck me as like bad, like in the way that a movie would like acquire a reputation for being like so bad you've heard about it just for being bad. I mean, mostly it was just like uh, not the most interesting kind of like rom com, but it had a few high points and mm-hmm. and nothing really like uh, uh like you know uh offending my aesthetic sensibilities or anything like that i mean i was overwhelmed by how embarrassed i would be not you watching them but just i you 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 had made this comment in the middle of the movie please share it with 
with the listeners. Uh, I I made more than one comment, so you're gonna have to give me a hint. I I don't like farce. Oh right, yeah, yeah. I was uh, yeah, I was uh, as we were getting into some of the 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 comical misunderstandings and lies upon lies. I was looking over at Diana and like, don't you always complain about this kind of like cringe plot that uh, yes, you just don't want to be there for it. I and... don't. In fact, I wanted to run away in various parts of the movie because I just couldn't deal with it. And then it brought back memories of when I watched this. So um, and and you pointed out about midway through. This is the part where I would usually start, start watching your rewatches from yeah. from midway through pretty much Skip yeah. the worst parts yeah uh well worst parts is relative because my, for me my worst parts are um being caught up in lies and and being you know crying and, and misunderstandings and running away because she's about to get found out etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. so yeah this was like one of the ultimate movies in that i would just watch these very very specific parts and a lot of it was just watching uh his name is bill so there's Bill and Hugh. Hugh, they're twins. Yeah, I don't think we, we, we haven't really covered that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want to drop in the cast list, by the way? Oh, so people, shoot. Yeah. yeah, I'm so distracted by this movie. Um, Okay, so uh, Mrs. Winterbourne stars Shirley MacLaine. This is the actual billing. Shirley MacLaine, mm-hmm. Ricky Lake, and then Brendan Fraser. Oh, Ricky Lake was second build. Yeah. Okay, I thought you mentioned to me that she was uh, third build at one point. Oh no, no, no! Like, I was, oh, I was, I was railing that Brendan Fraser was third build. Right, right. So, uh, which, yeah, so... which makes sense in where they are in their careers. You've got the Oscar winner. You have the very, very popular TV talk show host, syndicated talk show host. She was huge, right, at the time, and that is not meant to be a commentary on her weight, people. Just in case, I... but I will say that I was also very obsessed with my weight even at this age. So. You know, it's it's. It was the '90s. It was the thing to do. You know. Oh yeah, the '90s. Yeah, totally stopped in the '90s and didn't exist in the '80s. Sure. Okay, but um. I just remember the whole like talk show, uh, weight management, Oprah thing. That, that never stops. But uh, yeah. but but for me, I was like, when did Brendan Fraser blow up? And the answer is, there's get on the map and then blew up. Right. And Broadly, the answer is the 90s. but uh, <laughs> Right. But, oh, no, if only if it were a whole decade. So yeah, I think yeah, recognized with Encino Man mm-hmm. and then blew up with uh, The Mummy. Yeah. So this yeah. movie falls right right in between these things. Actually, you know what? Some people might say that he, he blew up with school ties. But he was in a lot of stuff where he was just like, wow, he's really good. Uh, yeah, I think, I, okay, was George of the Jungle before or after The Mummy? I believe George of the Jungle was before The Mummy. I think that's when he appeared on my radar. Your radar? Yes. And your <laughs> radar. I... Yeah, I get it. I get it. But at the same time, though, I'm talking about the zeitgeist, honey. Right, yes. I, I came from a family with, with fans of, uh, uh, from a prior generation, the the original George of the Jungle cartoon. So that adaptation was, uh, and was I, big news for us. And for me, it was Mrs. Winterborn, so. Oh, there you go. Tomato thingy so whatever yes okay so or did, did we cover the okay so Shirley, so i I, Shirley, stopped, I stopped a third build go ahead shirley mclean as grace the the the, the family's matriarch. mother the the matriarch yes mm-hmm. uh ricky lake as connie doyle the uh the uh woman who gets thrust into this situation uh brendan fraser playing identical twins hugh and bill he was the one who dies in the crash and bill is the survivor who meets connie afterward mm-hmm. uh uh, Miguel Sandoval as Paco, the lovable uh, butler, I guess. Is butler the correct term? I mean, butler, valet. He, valet, major domo, I mean, house guy. Uh, also a... Uh, Surrogate father figure. Wedding planner. <laughs> wedding planner. Yeah. Sure. Um, oh, and Lauren, Lauren Dean as uh, Scuzzbald Steve, the father of uh, Connie's uh, Connie's child. Mm-hmm. And Peter Garrity as uh, the family priest, Father Father Brian Kilrain. Sure. And then, you know, Jane Krakowski shows up. And, Jane Krakowski in a minor supporting role. Yeah. And it's great because she, she plays a very, very uptight, like, East Coast, you know, so much judgment in this movie with, like, the high wealth society thing, mm-hmm. which I, I, I noticed more and more when we were, you know, when we were watching it. So I just thought it was just regular judgmentalness. No, it's like, oh, no, this is East Coast judgmental. I always wanted to be East Coast rich. Right, right. Oh, just speaking about the supporting characters, I, we had an interesting side conversation about the the family priest, Father Brian, and we were like, well, that he doesn't, this does not seem like a Catholic family. They're far too much the archetypical uh, wasp family. And I was racking my brain thinking, like, who would be using that title? They must be Anglican. And then I looked it up on Wikipedia after, and I think I was uh, vindicated. So, yes, my, my knowledge of uh, useless denominational trivia. Yeah. And, and also, that's how 
far into this movie you were you know obviously <laughs> enraptured right <laughs> for for me one of the things well okay on rewatch again i'm watching parts of this movie that i'm very unfamiliar with so i was actually really like my heart was racing with the whole basically domestic abuse situation that connie was going through in the very very beginning of the movie yeah yeah that was uh horrific in so many ways and i know that's the point not but the she- most lighthearted way to kick off this uh, comedy but uh, right yeah. she's 18 her mother died while you're sleeping uh she mm-hmm. leaves her family but she has a difficult relationship with her father so she goes to new york she you know runs into this guy the first day there he takes her in she gets pregnant and pulls the like classic kind of like you're not exactly con artist but like oh you you have so much potential i'm an agent come G- 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 come come in with me oh now we're dating and, and yeah yeah an agent who also like steals all the oh, various steals, electronics steals, steals car radios that was right yeah <laughs> and and so it's 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 horrible the way like she's pregnant he basically says like whoa, whoa, whoa why why do you think that this is my kid basically like you know yeah like immediately gets one of his buddies to to lie and uh say that like he had slept with her so that he could throw her out and mm-hmm. it which is kind of, it was an interesting moment this little like i take of like uh, no yes you saw oh yeah yeah of course i slept with her so that, that was yeah. it's just fucking... it was terrible but also kind of funny i mean in a in a dark way so that's most of this movie it's terrible but kind of funny and like <laughs> yeah i mean when we get into like the whole you know fraud aspect and taking advantage of a grieving family like i I thought it was interesting that as as these movies often do when they have to like walk that fine line of of building comedy on the character trying to the the, the protagonist trying to maintain an elaborate lie but without making the audience hate the protagonist because then the movie doesn't work it like has to put in all this groundwork for uh you know, how, how she got into the situation and why she wasn't really trying to take advantage of them. But then she's kind of stuck. So like, you know, she she wakes up in the hospital and she's been mis- misidentified as as the dead daughter-in-law. Mm-hmm. And she tries to tell them that it's a mistake and what her real identity is. But they think, oh, she's delusional. She just came out of a coma. And you they know, keep she, drugging her. And they keep, yeah, they keep shooting her up with drugs. and Not the family, the, the hospital <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, staff. Yeah, the hospital staff. Yeah, so by, by the time this thing has gained some momentum, she's like already tried to tell the truth. And it's like, okay, this isn't really her fault but then it gets in this kind of morally gray area where it's like oh if i tell the truth now it's gonna uh uh you know be too awkward oh and they they, they get a lot of mileage also after the fact that uh that grace the matriarch has uh has heart, heart trouble mm-hmm. and it's like oh and if she she finds out that's that, while you were sleeping again i know yeah and this whole thing because like her 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 real daughter-in-law was pregnant and and you know she didn't survive the crash which means that her her unborn grandson died too and she has this baby that she thinks is is her grandson uh and now it's like uh, oh you don't actually have a grandson your your real uh daughter yep. your, your real unborn grandson died in the crash so right that's not something they that anyone wants to dump on her and that's probably you know the biggest like motivation for like oh we can't let her know the truth even though you know so right and and there there is a lot happening here so you've got you you have very very small amount of time with Hugh you know Brendan Fraser playing Hugh he's very mm-hmm. easygoing he's he, he rescues her because she accidentally gets on the train that they're on she did she was looking for the subway yeah that was also like a really uh that got, they got no they got a lot of mileage out of like just a few minutes with with Hugh on oh, screen before absolutely he died. yeah I know because he's like uh he's very kind he's quick to offer her help yeah yeah he's very kind and generous almost almost like you could you could think he was hitting on her at first but then he like brings her into the into the um the tra- private train car the, the private what, what do you call the not cabin cabin i don't think it's called a cabin on a train but like the sleeper car room sure. thing sure. into the private room that he's sharing with his wife so clearly he doesn't have any untoward intentions there but he also recognizes the situation where the whole thing about the unmistaken identity is that connie is wearing the ring because this this wife is just like oh try it on yeah oh, do she this, immediately do makes that. friends with connie and yeah then... And, and, they actually do look very similar, oddly enough. They, yeah. they bond over being pregnant and mm-hmm. uh, have all these different things about, you know, the swollen hands, swollen feet. You know, she lets her try on the ring and um, they lose the ring um, and they're both down on the floor reaching and, and, and Hugh comes in, dear penthouse. Right. <laughs> And he also says, as he's leaving, hey, you know, you know how I'm just always picking up pregnant women. You know, I have a thing for them. Uh, so I'm going to go see if we can get something to eat. Uh, hey, maybe I'll get lucky and find another one. So he does a lot with a little bit of space. 
yeah, and, and Brendan Fraser does kill it in terms of like making that charming. So okay. Not not anyone could have pulled that off, I think. So here's the thing, and you you just kind of nailed it on the head, and this is why I I I love this and I was so uncomfortable about rewatching it. It immediately went away when I realized how fucking charming he is in this movie. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. is supposed to be the up so he plays the one twin, and then when you meet the other one, you meet the uptight twin. And they it's do like it. totally opposite. Absolutely. He's very reserved and uh He he had to take over the business and and all this other stuff. Hugh was the lighthearted one who got mm-hmm. to go off and run off and do whatever it was. He was the responsible one that had to do the stuff. So And that was actually kind of their falling out because as their as their father was uh businessman you know, all the time yeah businessman all the time always absent and as he kind of brings them in and says like oh i'm retiring i want to you know pass the family business onto the two of you and divide the responsibilities and uh Hugh, Hugh basically just like pulls a runner he like just vanishes without a word and yeah. yeah so and then three months later gets a postcard how did it go right uh so so there is that and, and as i'm watching this i'm just like oh dear god this is this is while you were sleeping meets um sabrina the remake of sabrina that i'm more familiar with with harrison Ford, the uptight brother and the the low you know the the more carefree brother and then you know it's it's just it's it was interesting all the things that i was running oh and i also threw in a whole uh knives out situation where you had the you know the the lovable person who was hired but their family and then i'm like okay but at the end of this movie they're totally gonna knives out this situation where it's just like oh god no you're not family are you referring to paco or uh... paco yes yeah yeah of course, but it was the opposite because Paco really was part of the family. You no, have that, I know. And he had that that wonder wonderful speech of like you know after kind of Connie's secret has come out, it's just like you know you're, you're as much of a Winterborn as I am. Yeah, and yeah, just yeah. And and then I, I was also uh, just uh, I I I uh, thought of Knives Out when you were talking about the odd billing situation with like the person who's clearly the protagonist and has the most screen time is still like you know yeah. just, I remember being flustered that uh, Anadarmus was like third build in that movie beneath uh, Daniel Craig and Chris no Chris Evans was top I think probably which is just nuts because the like, point is <laughs> Daniel Craig and Chris Evans were up oh, wait where was Christopher Plummer was he an and yeah, he was an ant. No, I think Daniel Craig was top build. But regardless, the I, point is the point is if you want to hear about a Nana Darmus movie, maybe soon. I don't know. Right, <laughs> we'll find out. Sure, nice. Thank you. Um, yeah. So as I got to the parts that I was more familiar with, I'm just like, oh, I remember loving this so much, and mm-hmm. I still love this. I mean, once I was watching it, I could totally see it. Like this movie has as charm. I could it's, see it's it. Very. I mean, uh, yeah. I don't want to say guilty pleasure, but uh, it's okay. I'll say simple pleasure. Well, it's also, if you watch it in my way, it's a very condensed watching two people, watching Ricky Lake being charmed as, you know, by Brendan Fraser. And I want to be charmed by Brendan Fraser. So mm-hmm. he, he just, it's, it's very good. In fact, the, the two, like, I believe it was like 31 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. I went to go find the positive ones. And what they actually said is that like Shirley MacLaine and Brendan Fraser were just not used well enough. They deserve better than this, basically. Uh, they, yeah, they... That's an interesting take. I mean, I would say that, like, they were definitely responsible for elevating the movie. Yeah. I mean, the vast majority of what's good in it is coming from them. Mm-hmm. And not to, like, not to be harsh about it, but I did feel like, like Ricky Lake was, uh, I don't want to say dragging the movie down, but... Uh, Definitely kind of a lost seemed, opportunity. Like she, if they had gotten maybe like a more skilled actress in that main role to kind of flesh things out, because she did get a lot of screen time and a lot of the kind of emotional content of this movie is like her alone in a room monologuing to her baby, which is actually really annoying. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. And if you and and yeah, I mean, if you could have just gotten someone in there with like a, a bit of a vision for like how to bring that character to life a bit more in those moments, maybe this movie would have, you know, gotten more than 10%, but well, so uh, and it's like what I was saying earlier. It's like, it's not, it, it's not like she's abysmal, but it, she, she was just coming across as kind of like just medium, you know? Well, right, right. Again, it was, it was too much to put on her shoulders. Yeah. 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 Not, I don't think she's that kind of actress. And not know? to mention that it's like, um, ugh, sorry, just some of those lines actually did, did irritate me. Cookie, can, can I go to jail for this? Can you say five to 10? And I'm just like, yes, you will be going to jail for this on a technicality yeah i would that was an interesting side question for me it's like what point does this actually become fraud because i'm not yeah i mean uh, i had i had so many damn questions like when a baby is born like don't you have to get a birth certificate and all this other stuff but but the second she's in the protection of the winterborn family though yeah I know it does not take much money to just have people look the other way for like, can we get the baptism going, please? All right, well, where's the person? Father. I'll say, and how, Father, just 
go ahead. I was wondering, like, how how much work would it take for her to actually just adopt, like, Patricia's legal identity at that point? Because, like, there's not a whole lot. It's not like there's DNA records. Like, probably dental records are the only things that could really tie her to her old self. And if everyone else is like, oh, yeah, of course that's Patricia, you know? Uh, well, to an extent. But... The funny thing is, though, so so if I may, it's it's a very very short time period, and and also uh, we should point out that this this was uh, loosely adapted by a, uh, a it was a crime novel. Yeah, like but, a psychological thriller or something. Not psychological. I think that's but, what I read. But, but it, well, it, some it, kind of thriller. Well, it's it's it, it, it kept Wikipedia kept saying crime novel, mm-hmm. and if you look at the beats of it, it absolutely makes sense because eventually, you know, she she and Bill fall in love and they they get engaged, and then we're comes out that and then the scuzz bag comes back is like this is the this is my child you know i i he wants to basically he wants to get his yeah he's in it for money and he's kind of like exploiting his his claim of paternity in order to get a payoff and and... the truth basically yeah 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 which something you pointed out to me while we were watching was which was actually really helpful he's like when they start to fall in love with each other, there's there's like the whole guilt thing of just like you know it's it's my it's my brother's wife and this is uncomfortable. I was kind of yeah like I I was only vaguely familiar with the plot going in, but it's like wait he's falling in love with with his his widowed sister in law and that kind of right. weird you know. But and actually I was thinking about that like there are other cultures and I'm basing this loosely off of that that movie Holy Matrimony with uh, right. Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Patricia Arquette where it's just a reliable like... source if there is one <laughs> clearly but I'm just saying aren't, aren't well first of all aren't there cultures where you know like stays in the family for the sake of you know this I don't know again I'm learning this all from that because but the, the whole isn't that a little bit weird <laughs> I mean sure but I don't. I don't want to cast judgment on like familial what have yous. Sorry, we just watched a lot of Game of Thrones and hated all of that. So. <laughs> we were just <laughs> we were just talking about it. We weren't watching it, but it, uh, yeah, I don't even remember how we got onto that subject. But it was just like years after the series finale. It's like man, I Game Still, of Thrones sucked. I'm, yeah. <laughs> it didn't, but it, we we just felt very betrayed by it. Well, the, anyway, um, <laughs> yes, this is all about us. Um, <laughs> But but ultimately, like I, he's having that thing. But from the very very beginning, he's listening to this, and she's approximately nineteen years old as this is happening. She, mm-hmm. At best, she's early twenties. He can tell that she's lying from the beginning. Not not just because he like, suspects from the beginning. Yeah, he's a snob in the beginning. Right. He suspects it. He's he's definitely like doing you know paying for some you know researching on her this whole time. Yeah. And he and he finds because, out because like yeah because she like contradicted herself a few times and mm-hmm. he kind of like oh she doesn't fit in. and then meanwhile it's this whole like oh she's just not fitting in with the family and it's like oh and you're just you're just prejudiced against her because she clearly didn't grow up upper class uh, but you know that doesn't mean it's inconceivable that that Hugh could have married her and... right right and and she even says things like and he he actually tells her to her face though just like you know no your your brother was a stand up guy he you know helped out a pregnant woman and and all this and he and he, and he married her and it's so right. funny that she said that I'm like y- you really think that that's like the base level of just like I'm going to raise my child. And that's that's the baseline of being a stand up guy. And I'm just like, oh, that's so upsetting. And well, and, the, and the... then he even says to her face, she's just like, we're talking about you, right? <laughs> so it's just I I mean, in, in fairness, I think what she said was that like that's more than a lot of guys would do, which is you mm-hmm. know still true, especially by her especially by her own experience, right? Exactly. Yeah. But but uh, so the the thing that uh, we agreed was interesting was just in like the and this goes along with what I was saying about how like you can kind of see the meticulous plotting of like when people find out what to m- keep things from becoming too unsympathetic that like by the time they actually or well i'm not gonna say start to fall in love with each other but by the time they're like kissing each other uh bill pretty much knows for certain that that yes she's lying because uh he saw her accidentally sign her real name and even went and found that like that was the name of one of the purported casualties in the train wreck so he he knows this is not actually his brother's widow at that point but he also is still maintaining maintaining the life for her to his mother yes so because he even says I'm like you know with that whole uh the heart attack might kill her kind of thing so. i don't know if that's the case though because or, yeah i mean that's only one well, Please well, go what, ahead. Yeah. well actually if i may um he he had said like you know uh, he's like what do you think of patricia she's like oh i think she's great he's like i think so too but is this weird though i mean she's my brother's widow by that point he knows that she's not but he's actually saying it to his mom trying to have a real conversation with her about all the things that are wrong about it yeah because that needs to be maintained in order for her to you know 
Yeah, and he still wants his mother's approval. So right, right, and <laughs> which is a, a, a fun, int- actually a badly done line, but a, a funny line that Connie does, where she's just be, basically Bill is being forced to take her out to lunch, and she said, "Wow, it's you know I, you don't have to if you don't want to." Uh, no, no, no. If I don't, I'll never hear the end of it. Huh? It's really interesting to meet a grown man who's still afraid of his mommy. Right. And I'm like, it was it was clunkily done, but also at the same time, I think it's. Nice her at getting a single jab at him because he's always had the upper hand this whole time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, Change the dynamic as, as the relationship blossoms. You know? Also, I think there is also something to be said. God, this is so freaking class, Pride and Prejudice, Mr. Darcy, what have you. But it's just... I wanted to bring that up because he is very much the Mr. Darcy type, especially in, in the early part, right? Yeah, absolutely. Not that's not to mention the, whole, this appeals to you, the whole class structure thing, the yeah, fact yeah, that, yeah. that... But also one of the things that's very, very appealing to her is... I imagine he thinks is appealing about her is that she, she may be like, she gives him shit. Mm -hmm. She does not like completely try to not be herself in front of him because there's, there's the part where she's lying, but she's also still being herself. Like he's taking her on a tour of Boston and she's like, can we go to the cheers bar? (laughs) Yeah. He's like, uh, I'm going to pretend you didn't just say that. I love that show. (laughs) Norm. (laughs) And so I think there's there again, it's very, it's tiny morsels to work with, but when you're, you know, okay, if this came out in 96, I was 13, so I was watching this, like, you know, 14, 15 year old. It's like, it's enough because mm-hmm. they're older than me, and this is how it works, and this is what you're supposed to do. And I feel, I still think that one of the best things about a relationship is watching your influence on your partner, mm. um, having them become more relaxed, becoming comfortable with being themselves. Yeah. And, or even just figuring out that, they don't even know what themselves are, but he doesn't have to be the saving the business business guy. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and and I suppose that could be a pretty good thesis for like what is so uh, compelling about this Mr. Darcy type of character who's, you know, not comfortable being themselves in front of pretty much anyone, right? Right. So not... that when, when the love interest comes along and gets him to come out of a shell. And, mm-hmm. yeah. and it's weird because, I mean, he thinks she's after the money. And she actually proves in different instances over and over again, like, no, 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 I don't want the money. You know, this is like really uncomfortable. The only thing she actually like goes for is the comfort of her child. Mm-hmm. And then like, I, I want to get a chain for this. A, a locket, locket with a picture of her with mother the, in yeah. it. Yeah. That's the one thing she asks for. And even when she runs away, she leaves the chain. Yeah. I noticed that. She, yeah. she throws the chain back, but then she, uh, um, there's also a little bit of just, goofy comedy that he does in the part where she's running away and he comes in with roses yeah <laughs> and, and that's actually the the quote that i did from beforehand it's just like oh you know that's that was just like a brother-in-law sister-in-law kiss and uh and he's got roses in his hand he's like uh these oh oh uh these are for mom and he throws them out the door <laughs> that, that was pretty funny man. i got a laugh out of it yeah i i and the weird thing is is that i had forgotten about all of that and it all came flooding back to me he does a list of he's like okay well i'm not i'm not you you can make your own decision but um uh i'm a businessman let's make a list of pros and cons for you leaving and it's yeah. just it all came flooding back and i'm just like oh my god it's so great the way he's doing this the boy he's being funny about it but he's also trying to tell his feelings and he's just like i was gonna ask you to marry me but like oh uh okay well we don't have to talk about that and he, he rips it off there and just shows it to her yeah yeah that whole pro and con list scene in hindsight was actually pretty brilliant because it's like this the 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 the, the very reserved guy who up to this point hasn't been talking very much and it's like the floodgates kind of come down all at once and it's all just kind of like like he he never shuts up through the entire scene is just constantly like pattering and pattering and mm-hmm. and and he like diverts it into this oh okay so i'm just gonna get this sheet of paper and we're gonna you know so yeah it's like... yeah and, and and he he's desperate too mm-hmm. he, he he doesn't feel like he can stop her but at the same time he doesn't want her to go and and he gives her the roses that have been like kind of crushed and like right. here you go and he gives when he it... flung them out into the hallway he yeah and get some and, uh, these actually were for you so it's like, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> and and also the next level of it which is actually really really sweet He's he's dealing back and forth between like you know he knows the truth about her but at the same time he he talks to the baby and mm-hmm. he's like you know she listens to you let her know we're gonna have a great time we'll take you to ball games we can watch the Red Sox lose together <laughs> and then the baby pees on him and it's like damn it now it's just stupid again <laughs> I, was, was was that a little too real uh, we're we're having we're having dog situations where i'm cleaning up lots of urine so in one case directly off your body well unfortunately the urine was way too clear uh sure 
but to but at the same time he also ended with now you have to marry me <laughs> right so there are parts that are just really really great there are some lines the part where they dance and it's really really yeah. sweet i would watch that on a loop and you have paco who is drunk and very heartbroken mm-hmm. and he's just like i taught my boys how to tango you know dance with her and you know and he's angry because they're not like doing loudly it. insisting from yep. from bed as he <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, and, to stand up but, right right yeah. and it's so funny because you hear him snoring and they they lean their head over he wakes up sees they're not dancing dance <laughs> paco was great right yeah. right and and I should also point out that this movie starts with a dead body and a guy was murdered. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. And it's so funny because, like I said, they're trying to take this into a crime novel and make it into a rom-com. And it's just, it the tone is off in so many different places. I was I was thinking back to that as I was watching it, thinking back to the opening, the little foreshadowing where it's like, are you supposed to feel better because you know that like he's an Steve, asshole that that Steve dies in the end and everything? It's like that's what it's building up to. Or... I actually like panicked. I'm like, I do not remember they're showing that in the beginning, and then when it got to the you know the actual start of the movie, I'm like, all oh, right, I forgot. I don't remember much of this movie because I didn't watch it. <laughs> right. Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So that that's that's really what happens. Like, I have very few. I have very very rarely watched movies where I just watch it from beginning to end without just like skipping it because I will also get through it faster so I can watch it again. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm not really watching it, watching it. So never watch it on like 1.5 speed, you know. Oh well, that's just irritating because then they'll sound like chipmunks. Did I ever tell Romantic you? Romantic chipmunks. Okay, okay. So I used to record the audio of movies onto cassette cassettes to and just like take around with you on your Walkman. And, yeah, yeah. And, and and on trips and car trips. Mm-hmm. And so there was one instance where it was Look Who's Talking Three, and something was wrong with the speed of it. So I accidentally recorded that the one with the pets. That's the one with the pets. Okay. I recorded it, and for some reason it was faster then the other one and then for some reason it stopped and then it started where it was when i recorded originally so if i were to watch that movie now it would sound weirdly distorted because it recorded at 1.5 speed so i couldn't hear it at this and this is what was really normal about it so it's like i I don't think i can watch that movie again because it'll sound weird and that's why i also don't listen to podcasts at 1.5 speed because if i ever were to listen with somebody else and or go to a live show i would just be like i don't like the way they sound so so am i to understand that you had like a, a special edition of look who's talking three that was all like fast paced and snappy like a david mammoth play or oh my god <laughs> i'm wondering how much of that i could start reciting right now i, I would actually need a, a a prompting to go but for some reason all i could think is radcliffe honey radcliffe and she's talking he's talking about a dog so I, I, do, I do so enjoy these peaks into your childhood. So many things that I forget. Yeah. And for the record, it was Look Who's Talking Now, uh, East Ventura, Pet Detective, mm-hmm. Clue, mm-hmm. Weekend at Bernie's 2. Mm-hmm. Those are the four major ones that I remember. There are definitely some good movies in that list. The thing is about Weekend, Subset. <laughs> the thing is about weekend at Bernie's 2, uh, lots of good music. Oh, sure. Yeah. And musical play, uh, pieces. So then I could just listen to the music as I'm remembering what's happening at the same time. Speaking of which, yes. makeup montage. There was a makeup montage. Oh, makeup montage. The man, yeah, there was a lot of like uh like cosmetic fashion that was going over my head, like, oh, that was an inappropriate nail polish to wear to a garden party. Could have fooled me. What the fuck's a garden party? Her hairstyle definitely sucked, though. That was a good. Uh, okay, good as somebody change. with long, wavy brown hair, how dare you? What the 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 previous? I've never seen you wear your hair up like that, like in the. Well, that just is my own personal choice. Well, yeah, no, that like that. That's what I was referring to. That like '90s wall of hair, the like Elaine Bennis thing. Although it looked more like '80s influenced, you know, it was like a. I want to comment about the puffy shoulders of her wedding dress. I know. I was gonna say I don't know enough, or I don't remember enough if that's like, a, oh, is this like kind of a like a trashy New Jersey stereotype thing? Or, I'm gonna assume know. yes, that, yeah, and that's why I'm not that commenting on any of it because I'm just like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not gonna comment. But 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 the shoulders that you were that you wanted to puffy comment on, shoulders, <laughs> very that puffy. Yeah. I swear we're from the '80s, but no, it turns out '90s. Yeah. Continuation. It's like, for some reason, I think the shoulder pads, the shoulder pads were the 80s, so anything puffy in the shoulders had to have been just the 80s. Turns out that's not true. Sure, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, she looked like a Warcraft character. (laughs) Uh, I'm just trying really hard to think about 
all of the things. Yeah, it's it's like a murder thing, but don't worry about it. Everything turns out okay. Yeah, there's there's this moment at the end of the movie where like everyone's trying to confess to the murder in order to protect each other, and, and it, the police are like quizzing them on the details of the. <laughs> where was he shot? In the head, in the heart, in the motel. <laughs> Again, there are gems in this movie. Mm. There is a shit ton of charm. There's a lot to think yeah, that they're, this they're... is not high quality. But and I know Rotten Tomatoes isn't exactly like ten percent is a ten percent movie. It's oh, by the way, the 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 listener is like it's in the sixties. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean yeah, and 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 for someone who's like not evaluating a movie, not evaluating the movie as a whole, but like what does this have to offer to me in terms of like just remembering the parts that I like or possibly re- rewatching the parts that you that you like as you did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say there's like there's like 20 or 30 minutes of just like really solid comedy and heart in this movie. It, it's just a shame that it's kind of surrounded by a bunch of stuff that doesn't work so well, you know. Yeah. How did I raise such a snob? I don't know, mother. Let's ask the servants. <laughs> that was a good line, too. <laughs> That's a good line. And also, uh, Grace Winterborn trying to get the priest to just basically justify using the words tits and ass. Right. <laughs> not not together, but just like, you know, uh, father, that's okay, right? Uh, yeah, tits. Well, is, yeah. <laughs> Tits is fine. Yeah, it's like, oh, in the, the Bible, they talk about the jawbone of an ass. I don't think that was the same uh, context, but... Uh-huh, uh-huh. I mean, ass is good. See? See? Yeah. <laughs> I want to be rich. I, <laughs> I want to be rich so much. Um, you have a personal clergyman to comment yeah. on your, your word choices? Or... Oh, crap, I do have that, and I'm not rich. <laughs> uh, very Catholic upbringing. Okay. Okay. So... You watch this. I want to ask you, when did they fall in love? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I was pondering that question, and it's like, eh, well, you know, I, I, what, what, one of my kind of complaints about the the way the movie was structured is that I don't feel it gave me a ton to work with in terms of like relationship beats. Mm-hmm. The the characters even call out how very like uh, rapid all that development was, and it's like, oh, is this just like a grief thing? Or, uh, but yeah, I mean, for for lack of. Uh, for lack of anything like that, I think I would just say the tango scene. Mm-hmm. It's it's like a lot of the it's building on what would be more like the kind of you know defrosting and budding friendship. If if I recall that like uh, uh, comes right after their little tourist trip through through Boston when she goes to the jewelry store, uh, and then that was just like you know drunken Paco yelling at them that they have to dance the tango, and that just like. It immediately becomes sensuous, and uh, by the end of it, they're making out, and it's like, well, I I don't have a solid sense of where Connie's feelings were developing, but uh, we do now, so yeah, I mean, that's I I, I don't think I could really justify any answer besides that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's where I'm really starting to dissect it. Yeah, please do. I I, I I look forward to you having a bit more nuance in this because you've, you've you've had years more to give a thought than I have. If if it's really to be the what was presented to us, um, I always assumed at my younger age that he fell in love with her when Grace was trying to add her to the will, and she said no don't do it. Uh, Please yeah. don't do that. You know, yeah. I don't want this. And Grace is just like, okay, now I want to do it more. And she looks distressed by that. Cause mm. he's about to tell his mother what was happening. And the end of that scene is just like, Bill, you had something you needed to say. He's like, no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So, so there was that. And the difference is, is that he had to reconcile that. And that whole thing with Paco and the, the drunken dance thing happened afterwards. And by that point, he's so giddy about Mm. her he's just like oh she's not who i thought she was he had that you know very sensuous dance scene with her and and kissing her and he is just flummoxed by her and then he leaves talks to his mother and talks about like i think i like her right so but again he's still holding it back because again she is and the right (laughs) i mean she still has the heart thing and he's probably concerned about it too even though he's very like forthright because there's such an incredibly weird conversation that was well yeah but But, i don't think he has any friends that's true yeah no one to talk about with the mother who still believes that this is that this is his sister-in-law oh oh i thought you i thought you not even the sister-in-law part but just like like mom i think i love somebody (laughs) or i think yeah no mainly just the pretending to be in love with a sister-in-law who only he knows is not actually his sister-in-law so you know well, he's not pretending pretending to the, pretending that it's his sister in law <laughs> with whom he is in love. There you go. And now we have the whole thing where it's just like we were talking about how horrible she was at trying to cover up her own lies and everything like that. Not <laughs> yeah. so easy now, is it? <laughs> 
to keep this whole thing, you know, straight. <laughs> I, I think when when she signed her real name to the check and like when 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 Bill is standing right there, I believe my my immediate reaction was, God, she sucks. <laughs> <laughs> She's 19. Give her yeah, some sure. give her some credit. Okay, yeah. Um so so that's Bill and for me I honestly think that she knew that she felt something but I think she fell in love with him when he did the pros and cons list. Mm. I mean, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can yeah. I I yeah. I think your I think your answer was just better than mine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> On both counts. Well, gee, honey, I've had how many As decades said, yes. to really think about it. It's like <laughs> For me, it's like, well, before there were, I was getting very little chemistry between them, and now they're kissing each other passionately. So, okay. <laughs> Read the nuances, honey. Right. Oh, I've man. observed. <laughs> I'd also like to point out really, really quick before we go into the next segment, like the whole thing about the age. I mean, she's nineteen-ish, mm-hmm. and and I'm trying to figure out how the hell old are Bill and Hugh supposed to be. And it's yeah, really not hard a, to tell. I would okay. I mean, for one thing, I would hope that um, that Bill's not a lot older than Connie, just because it kind of makes the relationship work a bit better that way. But I think the 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 hints are kind of there to support it. That like um, about how old? About about like maybe twenty two or so, because they said that. Ugh. Well, well, okay, okay, okay. So that we we know that their father died three years before the events of the movie. Okay. And that uh, that was after uh, Hugh had kind of left and estranged himself from the family. And I'm thinking, like, maybe the uh, the father deciding to retire and, and, you know, put them in a position of authority happened, like, when, very early in their adulthood. Like, maybe only shortly after they themselves had turned 18. And yeah. it's like, oh, oh now's uh-oh. the time to, like, decide if you're going to go to college or whatever. So I'm thinking, like, well, okay, like, if... Uh, you know, the, the whole, like, you need to take over the family business thing is happening on or shortly after their 18th birthday. So that plus three years, that's about where I'm getting, like, maybe 22 or so. Okay, okay, okay. Unfortunately, when when Bill, not Bill, when Hugh was on the train, mm-hmm. he was talking about the whole crowding thing and how he's going back home. He's just like, oh, I forgot about all the spring break stuff. And in my head, the whole spring break timing of that, how old were you when you stopped paying attention to when spring break was? But I assumed uh, they were they were talking about after you graduated from college. You could be right, right. that they get just talking about and, and let's be honest, East Coast, graduating from prep school, babe. Yeah. And I mean and, and Hugh does seem like the kind of person to participate in spring break without being a college student. So you Well, know. there is that. So <laughs> I, so from that line I assumed that maybe they were like twenty five. Yeah, that yeah, that But if they skip college, which were younger than them so college became like uh almost necessity in right. our generation so right. i think i might give them a little bit of credit that maybe it's just like straight out of mm-hmm. prep school they can run for it they can be groomed to do this because the father wants to retire and they're rich so they can get away with it yeah yeah so okay. yeah i mean even okay. when you said, yeah all right that feels less gross yay not that you know you know, eighteen to twenty-five is that's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty significant. Well, it's not. Sig- it's significant, but my head is just like seven-year. Well, six-year age difference is not so bad. Yeah, it's just yeah. where it's happening. I mean, we're not being judgmental here. But I am. Terms, but oh, 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 okay. Diana's being judgmental. That's fine. I can't help it. I can't <laughs> help it. But but again, it's just like I don't have a problem with a six-year age difference. I have a problem with the you know the dynamics that come with it, and mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. there's a lot to work with there, but. She actually has just like a little bit of power in the scenario because she has the baby. <laughs> right, right. So, but again, it's it's that's that's way too big. Okay, thanks for making me feel a little bit better about this imaginary uh, plot. Oh, I'm so glad to help. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, important question: What happens next? Well, um. Oh God. I... <laughs> what? Oh, I'm starting to think about it, and she's like, "Oh shit." Okay, well, I'll 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 go ahead and go in a in a in a more cheerful direction if you're if you're if you're having dour thoughts. But well, uh, no, let me let me let me start with this. Okay. There's so many legalities that they're gonna have to deal with right now, fraud and. Uh, but but they can afford such expensive lawyers. I know that, but as a pain in the butt. They're like they're like hiring a top of the line lawyer just for the real killer because they felt bad for her, you know. Right. Uh, uh, there, there, there is that, and that, that actually that line really bugged me too. I want to hire her a lawyer, uh, one that specializes in the. Sure, I did it, but can you blame me? I mean, is that for like reduced sentencing or like? Well, I mean, first of all, get our... if you're if you're you know, I don't know. 
I mean, I was thinking, like, I don't think anyone's trying to help her get away with it, but, you know... You, she you confessed. Plead, plead down to, to second degree kind of thing. One or, of those things you know, where like she can also help with the baby raising. 15 to 25. I want to get her a lawyer, and, you know, she... Yeah. There's, a, there's a kinship there. I mean, even guilty people deserve good lawyers, you know. Well, everyone deserves... Yeah, that's yep. my point. Anyway. Yep. yep. Um, hmm. Where was I? Okay, so... Uh, I, I just didn't like the line, is all. <laughs> the delivery. Uh, I get... Yeah, I know. It's just like, man... So, so, I, I, I'm with you on that, actually, because that, that is another example of like so many places in this movie is just like maybe a good script doctoring pass and some different casting. And this could have been a much better movie. Right. But yeah, the, 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 yeah you're right. There are a lot of lines like that one that are just like, oh, mm-hmm. in the very, very end. Mm-hmm. Do you, Patricia, take Bill? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I uh, promise to do all those things. And it's like, oh, God. This is the last line of the movie, and I just want to punch her. Yeah, that was cheesy at best. Yeah, don't do that in front of ever. I mean, I know you're trying to make a declaration that you want to be yourself, but like, he already knows the people who matter know. This is society that you're trying to put up appearances in front of. Throwing a lot of evidence out that might foul up the whole, like, assume the 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 woman's identity thing. They were already in People magazine because of the society pages. Yeah, that's just. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of bullshit happening there. There would, yeah, I mean, okay. Oh, now I'm upset. We could okay. So I, I I do want to hear your thoughts on on how they get away with all that. But I would just assume that like, I mean, how lucky for them that it's like you know before the digital era and probably like a lot fewer hoops they would have to jump through just with like you know paper identity records and like I said you know dental records probably the only real pitfall there in terms of uh... not to mention the check is in evidence now, right? And so there is something there. But the question is like because okay because because wh- Steve what... was. Yeah. Steve was blackmailing her. Was blackmailing her, not just with the fraud and stuff, but also the fact that he had a, a check that she had forged with someone else's name signed on it, which the police had, which is why they went looking for them even after they had the oh, real murderer. But I just resolved this all in my head. How the fuck did they get her on any accounts? You're supposed to do that with IDs and shit, you know? So if anything, right. who actually opened up the account... It was the rich people. Sorry, I'm just I'm just now having the whole like this is a, a bunch of because they definitely gave her permission to use the account. It was in, well, yeah, the it was in her. The, but but yeah. at the same time, though, really think about it. Like, how do you get other people on your accounts? You have to show identification. You have to do all of this shit. Right. So she would have gone in there with with uh, Patricia's ID that was like. What to what extent is they, there like ever, civil and criminal? Because, we never like, really found out if they like recovered her driver's license from the wreckage and like oh here's your personal effects and you know like, right or if she even had any. Rec- I mean, when you're 18, you don't necessarily have your driver's license and what IDs sure, yeah. did you have beforehand? So, mm-hmm. I mean, again, what personal effects and anything like that? Here, here is my thing though. It's like I don't know the legal of like who, like civil versus criminal if like well we we aren't going to charge her with fraud because these are our accounts and we don't want to pursue this well sometimes that's out of their hands right and it's still criminal be like a da's discretion kind of thing but if they don't want to like cooperate with the investigation and testify that's pretty much to the best of my understanding that's what it means when it's like they don't want to press charges so. right right the whole well the, you mean the the da or the the family or if the family then yeah because it's like it's up to the da if she committed a crime but like i said if they're not going to you know yeah complain about it or provide evidence then the prosecution might not move forward yeah so. n- not to mention like we're not she, lawyers we don't we're 100 we're, we're not lawyers we, we we just watch them on tv we not the good shows though not the ones <laughs> that provide any like accuracy of anything okay we watch lawyers on youtube we watch oh we do do that don't we <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no he's a good lawyer just um i was i watched a lot of law and order and i need to scrub so much of that out of my how the legal system works yeah uh elements of that um okay okay so fine okay. all of that aside they are rich enough to just kind of swipe all of this out i think the bigger problem will be the societal aspects of it but if if these things are to be believed the power of love is beyond what the society of the match oh god i'm talking about prime prejudice again aren't I? <laughs> well i mean i i think uh should i just record you know you know write down all these notes so i could just put it into pride and prejudice for that episode <laughs> I, 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 I don't think uh, I mean if, if if we're going off of what uh, what Grace Winterborn says it's not even the power of love so much as the power of uh, you know stubbornness and just you know if you're not gonna fit in go ahead and make, make society make adapt to you because right. you're still very rich even if they don't like you so also I don't think Bill was all that like 
into the quote unquote friends that he had at the garden party. You yeah, know, it's just yeah. like, you know, just mother and all of her, you know, how many thousand friends or whatever. Uh-huh. And so he's not even really into it. You know, he's just into the business aspect of it. And for as long as you're successful in business, if there's not the society aspect, what the hell did his father do? I don't know. I, in, I was trying to figure out what he was doing at that office. It kind of seemed yeah. like he was some kind of lawyer or accountant or I don't know. But you don't just hand the business over to your sons as a lawyer. I mean, if he were a lawyer, that probably would have come up with all, about all the legal stuff. So I'm not going to say he is a lawyer, but he was definitely a, 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 I, some I'm going kind to of like executive. Or... Yeah, exactly. He's he is executive businessman in Exa- office that is nice. Executive businessman. I'm going That's to the job title. I'm going to do my business things. <laughs> I'm going to say it involves finance of some kind, but not banking. Yeah, not yeah. or maybe it did, and that's how we got her name on that crap so easily. No, that's wrong. Maybe securities trading. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure he was the the chief business officer of the of, of, of the family business. So, yeah. No, I'm gonna stick with businessman. Business executive businessman. <laughs> I am business rich man. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think they're fine. They probably have like so much, like oh, I, I'm just remembering that Grace was a. Was a she was a, a starring on a Broadway show, right? Okay, fine. I was in the chorus, <laughs> and it folded. And it folded. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I like her. Yeah, she she was very good. Yeah, and she's also quick to recognize her own. Just like you know, oh, you know, the the, the lipstick was probably too much, and maybe that. I'm I'm sorry. I never had any daughters. Right. So <laughs> yeah. So yeah, oh, charming character. Damn, charming character. That's all we can say about that. So I think. I think it's just going to be pretty straightforward. Like they're going to clear up all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. She's going to get married. She is going to be Connie Winterborn. She is going to have a interesting life of being a mother. And she's, she's going to give those kids that Grace said, my heart can stand three or four more of these. Right. Yeah. She's, she's going to give her those kids. She's going to be so involved with her mother-in-law she's Mm -hmm. gonna get to know how to push herself through society but also not really give a shit yeah yeah do you think she'll try to reconcile with her father uh yeah why bother yeah i know me too (laughs) she's had enough talk i'm going with toxic men for one lifetime i'm going with any background i can deal with yeah yeah so yeah i mean when when the surrogate family is, is so great that you know right okay yeah so i mean i was i was thinking something similar like like I was saying, in in one of those one of those movie strengths is that it really does like kind of lay the groundwork of um, yeah. I mean, it's almost it's almost like you know the the Winterborn family is like too perfect where they're like ultra rich but also ultra accepting and they're all Bill wasn't what Bill wasn't he became that way okay yeah and for oh yeah it took him like maybe thirty minutes of screen time to become accepting but like you know the whole <laughs> thing about how like you know Grace didn't fit in at first either and and Paco is like it's this whole family of of, of rich misfits uh, and and that's why Connie fits in so well uh, with them you know I, I I think they like to to care for people yeah yeah exactly and that yeah I mean it's almost like, like if if, if oh, I were, if Hugh is any indication, if I were if I were a film critic here, I'd almost be saying like the, the this this family is almost like too perfect, like just kind of a straightforward wish fulfillment kind of thing. But it's a feel good movie. It's 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 what the movie is there to do, and it executes it pretty strongly, if not if not like in a nuanced way. But yeah, like I was saying, so they 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 really did. Um, I'm thinking a lot about just that that speech that uh, Paco gave at the train station about how yeah. you know about how they they accepted him and and you know you 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 can be a winterborn as much as i am and this is you know definitely a family that um they can handle it yeah yeah so uh yeah and i mean i i i kind of foresee a future that uh uh you know it extends <gasps> oh what, what? paco's gonna be the godfather to all of these children yeah when i wasn't even thinking that but no I, I was gonna say like i i could see connie uh you know, needing something to do with, now that she's idle rich and the you know family resources, I could see her getting into philanthropy, uh, probably for you know troubled young women like herself. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean that would, I mean if if she has the will for that, I don't, you know, it, it's like oh that's you know, just because she's the daughter-in-law coming in with ideas about how the family's going to spend their money, that's kind of what I was getting out the accepting thing, like oh yeah, that's a great idea, let's do that, you know. So mm-hmm. um, also something involving like a uh, heart conditions she's gonna be on the board of some yeah, yeah maybe yeah there's a lot of charities for that already but <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no 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 i'm kidding no i'm saying she's going to join something that's already there yeah yeah uh, I, I like that too yeah yeah uh and yeah more kids probably or, mm-hmm. yeah 
She's going to have three more kids. She does seem to take uh, relatively well to motherhood as well as anyone with absolutely no financial resources can. So <sighs> again, all of the, you know, the ways in which things worked out pretty well. I'm just like, Oh no, this is just, please don't glamorize being unwed. <laughs> it really did. Yeah. And it, it just I know it's not. Like, oh yeah, I know this is, this is uh very much kind of a love is all you need kind of movie, which is, like I said, it's what it's going for. It's a, it's a, it's kind of a shallow wish fulfillment thing, but eh, you know, you don't hate it for that, for being that. Yeah. But can I also throw in a little bit of reality in here where considering the fact that she was, you know, horrifically tossed out by her first real relationship and the fact that she was in a train wreck oh, she's I, I, was gonna some... say, I thought you were gonna say horrifically tossed out of the train but... also the train yeah. actually no i think that's why she <laughs> lived she, she wasn't tossed out of the train yeah she was inside uh, yeah. I, i'm gonna go with, she, she's gonna have some like uh things to work out in therapy oh yeah sure yeah totally that's like they don't even recognize the, any of that you know definitely she, definitely she was writing, blackmailed definitely gonna be writing a check for all that yeah yeah or she's gonna be one of those people where she's going to be writing a book about her experiences and it's gonna go become a bestseller propels her into a talk show hosting position oh my god that's really smart <laughs> no that was stupid no no you are not not far off actually but uh okay Okay. Okay. okay then. That was Mrs. Winterborn. Or uh, Mrs. Featherbottom, as I kept calling it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. For the, for the Arrested Development fans. <laughs> okay. So um, celebrate the rest of Frazuary with us. Yeah. Um, you, can, you can do that by reaching us out on Twitter and uh, Instagram at Hemecast, H E A M C A S T. I'm on Facebook at Happily Ever Aftermath. And you can always get us at contact at hemecast.com with any emails. Yeah, and uh, I'll be on Twitter uh, retweeting Hemecast. Right. Um, you've been on for a lot of episodes, Ryan. So you're gonna find some, you gotta find some new shtick. Oh, okay. Not now. You can do Not it now. now. Okay, I'll have I'll have it for next time. All right. So thanks again for talking about this uh, slightly embarrassing, but also I've been vindicated type movie. Yes, definitely not as bad as you made it out to be in your uh, in your uh, preparatory <laughs> statements. So let that be a lesson. Always lower your expectations. Exactly. All right. Uh, so until next time, may your aftermath be happy. Bye.